What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to part two of our Kaladesh Ixalan set review, otherwise known as M21. I'm here with Rob, as usual, for most set reviews. And we're going to be doing the red, the green, and all the colorless cards, and the gold cards. I forgot the gold cards. So uh, first we're starting with the red, my dude. All right, let me um, let me also open these up here on my phone. All okay. right, we're good to go. We're going to try to go a little quicker because uh, a lot of these cards are just not going to see any constructed play. Like Battle Rattle Shaman, for example, a four mana 2-2. Two, two. It's a Goblin Shaman. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may have a creature get plus 2, plus 0 oh, until end of turn. It's not going to be good. Is that, even, power... is that even good and limited? Like... <laughs> Uh, it's decent because, like, you play it, you give a flyer plus two plus zero, oh, and then they attack for four. It's not bad. Mm. It is also, every turn. It attacks as a as a four two. If 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 like it's the only. I mean, it's not bad. Battle Royale Shaman traditionally has been decent in like limited formats. Sure. Bolt Hound, Elemental Dog, two two for three. Haste. Whenever it attacks other creatures you control, get plus one plus zero oh, until end of turn. This is actually not Thank bad. Thank you. It it definitely seems okay. It's not. It's actually not that bad. What about pack pack leader into bolt hound? Pack leader, which was pack leader? Oh my god, the dog that gives all your other dogs indestructible. Seems attacks. pretty good. I'm putting bolt hound on the list, and but, it's uh, it's it's getting points from me because it's a dog for sure. Mm -hmm. But even beside that, I think the abilities are good. It's also shaped like a greyhound, coincidentally. It definitely has a greyhound esque body, and like it's definitely a greyhound head. Reviewing red, I'm having my stimulus properly stimulated. <laughs> Happy we could do that. Bone Pit Brute. Also, uh, Mr. Tasty, thank you so much for the resub. Really appreciate it. Bob the Sheep, if I didn't mention it, thank you for the resub. Really appreciate you. Bone Pit Brute, six mana for a four five Cyclops with Menace. When it enters the battlefield, a creature gets plus four plus O oh until end of turn. That's a sizable buff. Yeah. But it's only going to be a sizable buff. Rob, where? Never. In limited. That's Only correct. in limited. That's correct. We'll see you next time, <laughs> Bone Pooper. Brash Taunter. Five mana for a 1-1 one, one indestructible. Whenever Brash Taunter is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to a target opponent. Uh, this is literally Stuffy Doll, right? Five mana for a 1-1 one, one indestructible creature. This Stuff card's boop. Stuffy Doll was an 0-1. Oh, this is a 1-1. One, one. Brash Taunter fights another creature for three mana and a tap. Um... I don't think this is that bad. The best part about this card is the art. Okay, but... Maybe. I don't know, man. Stuffy Doll had a lot of combo potential. And it was a 0-1 for 5 mana that was indestructible. And it did not have this fight ability. I don't think it's any good. That's interesting. What do you guys think? Let me know what you guys think. I'm going to put it on the list because I think it has... I think, I think the ability... To deal damage to an opponent for however much damage this takes is universally very, very good. Um, a lot of times you'll be like, oh, Star of Extinction. That kills your opponent. You know? And this is almost better than Stuffy Doll because it has one more power and it has this fight ability. So I, I think it has potential. And I think the I'm putting it on the list for that. The problem I have is uh, is that it is it costs five. Agreed. But Stuffy Doll also costs five. And it's mostly, you're going to be playing it as a combo piece. Right, and it's just hard to deal with as a one-one with indestructible. If if Kerwit says I'd play it in chat, then it's probably not playable. Kerwit would definitely play it, but Kerwit also loves Boros Reckoner abilities. So, all right, I'm gonna go to the next. Wait, Obosh is interesting because if this deals damage, deals that much damage to target opponent, it actually deals double that damage, double. right? Yeah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, let's keep going. Burn Bright. Three mana. Creatures you control get plus two, plus oh until end of turn. This is just Trumpet. Trumpet. What's it called? The Trumpet card. Trumpet. Uh, it's... Ba -ba -ba -ba. That's, that is a Trumpet. You know what? <laughs> you know the card I'm talking about. Trumpeting. Trumpet, trumpet Blast. That's it. Nailed it. See you later. Chandra. Heart of Fire. Five mana for a five loyalty Chandra. <laughs> Uh, plus one, discard your hand, then exile the top three cards of your library until the end of turn. You may play cards exiled this way. Pretty good with see the see the truth, right? Yes. You're casting it not from your hand. I think this plus one is good. I think if you have two or fewer cards in your hand, this is just a, an advantage. And uh, usually you're going to be able to play at least a land and a spell from this because Chandra's five. The first time you use this... On, on a on a board that you're untapped with, you're going to have probably six mana. Or you're going to go use it on five, play a land from the three, play a card. 
for six. <clears throat> it's very likely that the cards you're, you're the cards you flip you're going to get value off of. Plus one, another plus one, two plus ones. Chandra deals two damage to any target. I think having just a general shock that deals two damage to anything, Planeswalker, player, or creature, is also very good. Negative nine, search your graveyard and library for any number of red instant or sorcery cards, exile them, then shuffle your library. You may cast them this turn, add six red. You ready? Mm -hmm. I love this card. I think it's very good. It's one of my favorites. It's so good. Go on the list. Yeah, it's it's so good. Again, we discussed this on the podcast. Um, uh, my my first inclination is that this just slides straight into mono red prison decks in 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 uh, older formats. Like it does everything you want to do. It discards your hand for your bridges. It also lets you see three card, four cards a turn essentially because of this card. Um, it's it's so good. This card's great. I agree. It's on the list. It's yep. really good. Chandra's Incinerator. This card was a card I didn't give a shit about. It's a six mana six six. Cool. It's a red card. It's one of those red, expensive rares that have six six power and toughness. And then it got real good. <laughs> this spell costs X less to cast, where X is the total amount of non-combat damage dealt to your opponents this turn. Trample. Whenever a source you control deals non-combat damage to opponent. It, Chandra's Incinerator deals that much damage to target creature or planeswalker that player controls. I think this card is I think this card is close to broken. This this card is like the epitome of everything we're complaining about in standard. Look at how much text is on this card. Mm -hmm. So and some and some of it is a way to basically cheat it into play. Yeah, again, it's a cost reductive card. Right? So the the thing I've been hearing people say about it in modern is that you suspend Rift Bolt on turn one. On turn two, you Lava Spike them or Lightning Bolt them or whatever one mana red spell you want to play. And then you play this for one mana on turn two. <laughs> In so modern. Stupid. It can't be dismembered. You can't use one burn spell on it. And then any future burn spell you use against them uh, deals basically twice as much damage. So good. It's actually kind of ridiculous. Yeah, it really is. I wouldn't even be... like uh, Thinking about the applications of this and how quickly you can get it in play, I wouldn't even be surprised if this was banned in modern because it's very strong. Like, it's a, it could be... It has the potential to be a turn two. At the worst, turn three, because you can literally go turn three, one mana, one mana, this guy. Yeah. On turn three. That seems extremely consistent. And then every... And then it's like a... It's a three mana, six, six... Uh, Phyrexian... Furnace of Wrath. Furnace of Wrath is what I was looking for. That doubles the damage. Right? So, Card. like, all of your burn spells deal six. All of your one mana burn spells deal six. This card's bonkers. Like, I don't understand it. Like, it's it seems way too good in, in, in like, a format like Modern. And I wouldn't even I... be surprised if there's enough burn in Standard to make this really good. Yeah, this card's really good. You it works well with, with Chandra also. You can't abrupt decay it. Like... You can't, like, I, but I don't know. Can't push it? You can't fatal push it? Yeah. The fact that it costs six mana, even though you're paying fucking one mana for it 90% of the time, <laughs> is ridiculous. Yeah, it's really good. I don't know, man. That's wild. This card's on the list. Chandra's Magmut, another elemental dog. 2-2 two, two for two. It deal <laughs> You tap it, it deals one damage to a player or a planeswalker. It's not Meh. bad. Thank you. Oh, this doesn't deal damage to players. Oh, target creature planeswalker. Okay, that's better. That's definitely better. Oh, you thought that it said if I if I lightning bolt your face, I can also do another three of your face? Yes. Thank God it doesn't say that. At the end of the day, it's still six six. You could cheat in a play. Oh no! Wait. So you do deal to their face, but then you get to kill their creature too. Correct. Okay, that's not bad. That's still in the middle. That's like in the middle. Yep. Um, what do you think of magma? Is it? I don't think it's any good. I don't think so either. Okay, just making sure. Chandra's Pyreling. Lots of Chandra things. 1-3 uh, for 2. One in, a, 1 in a red. Whenever a source you control deals non-combat damage to an opponent, this gets plus 1, plus 1, and double strike until end of turn. This is another card that's kind of scary. Yeah, double strike is real. I agree with you. I agree with you. Give me a second real quick. 
We're going to give Rob a second. Sorry, my pup was trying to go outside ringing the bell. That's okay. <laughs> That's hilarious. I didn't hear it. Oh, you're, Rob's, Rob's Chandra's Magma was trying to go outside. She, yeah, she is this outside. card? This card seems decent, right? Like This card, I especially. like this a lot. Yeah, this card's really good. Like, it reminds me of Kiln Fiend, but with Double Strike. A little more tame on the pump, but, but Double Strike is real. Right. Conspicuous Snoop. 2-2 two, two for Red Red. Play with the top card of your library revealed. You may cast goblin spells from the top of your library. In a goblin deck, this card's already great. As long as the top card of your library is a goblin, Conspicuous Snoop has all activated abilities of that card. I don't know if that's... Very... What? It's very what? It's very good. I think it's good. I just don't think that second ability is super relevant because a ton of goblins don't have that many activated abilities. Yeah. I, I agree with that, but but the I mean, you're playing it because it lets you play off the top of your library. Oh, for sure. Which is which has historically been a very, very strong ability, whether it's like Future Sight, Oracle of Moldiah, Corsair of Crufix. Yeah. So, yeah, this card's good. Very good. And... Crash Through. This is another reprint. One mana for a creature you control gain Trample and a draw a card. This is just a cycling card. If you have Feather, uh, like that's been like primarily the use for this card you just draw a card and because it targets you get all the the bonus the bon benefits which is bonuses and benefits of that other than that though i don't really think this card's super exciting i think with all the prowess creatures we're seeing i think this card is actually good okay actually that's a good point if there is a prowess deck i don't know if a lot of the prowess creatures were that constructible like except for like the storm wing we have to see all right i'm not gonna put it on there yet because i think it's no. still to be determined yeah. But I do think it's it's uh, it has potential. Destructive Tampering. I'm pretty sure this is a reprint too, right? It looks like a Kaladesh card. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's not with just Kaladesh art. Maybe it's a new it card does with Kaladesh look, art. That's interesting. It does look like Kaladesh art. You may be right, actually. It sounds familiar. Two and a red. So three mana. Choose one. Destroy an artifact or creatures without flying can't block this turn. Meh. Yeah, it's mad. Three mana to destroy an artifact is is too much more than I want to spend, and creatures without flying can block is not super relevant. Oh, is this Splinter's win? Double vision. Three red red. Whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery spell each turn, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. It really, it really depends on what you're copying with this. Like, if yeah. you play this into Cruel Ultimatum, it's pretty good, right? Yeah, wouldn't you rather just cast... Um... Uh, what's it called? The six mana enchantment. It's red and blue. Storm, the storm card. Thousand Year Storm. Yes. It's not exactly the same because you have to play two spells for Thousand Year Storm. The first yeah. one doesn't get a copy. The second one gets one copy because you played one spell, right? Yeah. I mean, I think it's definitely different. I don't think it's, I don't think it's like going to be a standard staple or anything, but it's definitely a unique card. Yeah, I agree. Fiery Emancipation. Three red, red, red for an enchantment. If a source you control will deal damage to a permanent, it deals triple that damage to that permanent or player instead. Ugh. Is that ugh bad or ugh good? I, I just, I feel like, Thanks. I mean, I don't think this card's any good, but like, it's it's a weird card, man. I mean, like, why would Six you... Six mana's a lot, but tripling damage is also ridiculous. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like it's gonna be like, you and I are gonna be like, doing this uh, in like, 2030 and there's going to be like fire fiery emancipation of con mag flux and it'll be if a source you control will deal damage to a permanent player it, it deals, deals six, six times that yeah that <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> oh man yeah it's just gonna keep it's just gonna keep accelerating yeah i don't think it's any i don't think it's any good yeah i'm just gonna i'm, I'm gonna keep going but it's definitely I, I'm impressed by it tripling damage. That's a lot. Yeah. Furious Rise, two and a red for an enchantment. At the beginning of your end step, if you control a creature with power four or greater, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card until you exile another card with Furious Rise. It's just a reprint. It's already in standard. Is it really? Yeah, this is already is it in from standard Theros? Right now. I don't. I mean, I don't like it. I don't like it now. So I don't think I'm going to like it more during M21. So. I played it um, in um, in limited in uh, red green decks, and I thought it was actually pretty 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 decent card. Really? Yeah. Uh huh. I mean, it's it's just it's pure card advantage, right? Not 
I don't know. If you have a creature, it is. If you don't, then it's not. Well, I mean, I'm talking about limited, right? I mean, there were a lot oh, of four power creatures. Oh, see, that's limited. what. Okay, see, you didn't say that. I could have sworn I said that in, in limited. I was playing red, green, and limited. Oh, maybe I didn't hear you. My bad. Yeah, no, you're good. Fear of the Bitten. One red, another reprint. Uh, enchant creature gets plus two, plus I want attacks each turn of able. Eh. Eh, okay. That is an eh, but I, but, but. I mean, plus two, plus two for one mana that stays around is not that bad. You can put on your storm like attack for six. Yeah, you could. That's it's a, not that's terrible. You have. I don't think it's listable, but I don't think it's terrible. No, I don't either. Um, Gadrak the Crown Scourge, two and a red for a five four. This this looks like one of the Transformers in the new Transformer movie. <laughs> flying it can't attack unless you control four or more artifacts so a little restrictive at the beginning of your end step create a treasure token for each non-token creature that died this turn so he's definitely going to try to help you get get artifacts into play what do you think about this guy um it just seems reminds like it's too me much work it rem yeah it reminds me a lot of Avantress gargoyle and i remember when it was spoiled and everyone was like oh my god that's so dumb it's a 5/4 flyer yeah for but two it's, mana. it never was you're never attacking with this thing man yeah i, I don't I, I mean i want to like this card but i don't think so i don't think it's making the i don't think it's making the cut i'll just grasp of darkness it you can do that that's the thing you can do goblin arsonist halo cub and mtg pyro thank you so much for the resubs buddy i appreciate both you guys higgins thank you so much for the resub my dude Goblin Arsonist, one mana for a 1-1 one, one Goblin that when it dies, you can have it deal one damage to any target. I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to keep going. Yep. Goblin Wizardry, four mana for an instant, create two 1-1 one, one Goblin Wizard tokens with prowess. Again, I don't think, yeah, I don't think 1-1 one, one Wizards with prowess are going to impact the board nearly enough. Ma Monastery Mentor does the same thing, but he also comes with a... Uh, a 2-2, two, two, he costs one life. You know, you get the point. Havoc Jester, 5 mana for a 5-5. Five, five. Whenever you sack a permanent, it deals 1 damage to any target. This is just a, a Mayhem Devil for 5, right? Yeah. Someone in chat said this is sneaky great. Uh, are you referring to Havoc Jester? Maybe there's something I'm not seeing here. Hmm. No, I think they were talking about the other card. I think that was too soon. I, I don't think Havoc Jester is going to see play for 5 mana. That's just No funny. way. Yeah, okay. Man, we're just going to... Cruising along in these red cards. Heartfire Immolator. One and a red for a 2-2 two -two with prowess. I like it already. Sacrifice <laughs> it. It deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker. That's actually pretty good. This card's pretty decent. I think this card's good. I mean, the prowess is nice. It's a 2-2 two -two for 2, which is fine for red. It is a wizard. It's a human wizard, which are both relevant creature types. If wizard lightning was in this set, I would tell you to put it on the list. I would put Wizard Lightning on the list. Oh, you don't no, think I'm it goes on the list now? No, I do not. Really? It's cool effect. Seems pretty decent. Uh, and, I, you know, you're looking at it like, oh, you know, it's not like it's uh, the three mana one one double striker that we saw where it's underpowered. It's a two two for two still. And it has prowess, but it's just too weak, I think. Being able to sacrifice it to kill a creature or a planeswalker seems really strong, though. Like, if it's. If you get three power or four power, if you go op to draw some cards or something, four power kills a questing beast, you know? It does. Yeah. I don't know. I put it on the list because I think it's decent. Uh, I think it, it's it's flexible again. Hellkite Punisher. 6-6 six, six for 7. Flying. It gets plus 1, plus 0 oh until end of turn for every red you spend. And that's not enough. Looks dominant in, uh, in limited. Other than that, it looks Oh, I'll crappy. draft this guy. Yeah. Hobble Fiend. 1 and a red for a 2-1. With Trample. 1 and sacrifice another creature. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. That's interesting. I mean, that's generally an effect that is not easy to come by or a cheap effect when it comes to sacrificing dudes. So I wouldn't overlook it, but I just don't see where it fits in right now. I also don't... Yeah, I wouldn't overlook it again. I agree with you. Um, but putting a 1-1 one, one counter on this is actually pretty strong. So Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's definitely more than like just 1-1-1 one, one, one until end of turn. So, yeah, Hobble Fiend, keep an eye on it. Not going on the list yet, but could be decent igneous cur which is another elemental dog a one two for two it gets plus two plus oh until end of turn i'm pretty sure this is a reprint i think it is yeah igneous cur is yeah i mean doesn't mean it's gonna see play see you later igneous cur nope kinetic auger x a star four for four mana three and a red it is a human shaman not a wizard with trample 
Its power is equal to the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. When it enters the battlefield, discard up to two cards, then draw that many cards. I like this card. I like it too. I just don't like it at four. Well, I mean, Crackling, I think if Crackling Drake, right? <laughs> I think if the other, yeah, but mm, yeah, but you're not netting any cards here. It Trample isn't the same as as Flying. I actually like Trample better than Flying. Really? In 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 a deck that's playing this, right? You're playing in a in a deck full of full of spells. Actually, maybe um, can't be chump blocked. You know this this can this can't be chump blocked. Flyers can. Um. It's got a lot going on. It's not bad. I mean, it, it discards cards, right? It discards your phoenixes. Um, it, it works with three L's. Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, Arclight Phoenix. Oh, because that's all you want to do in standard is discard Arclight Phoenixes. I'm just saying it works with Riel, the Everwise. Right. Not that bad. You can go right. Riel into this. I put it on the list because it does say draw two, then 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 discard two, discard two, then draw two. So. And trample is not nothing. It could be like a seven four, and attacking with that is not bad. All right, I'm gonna put it on the list. Onake Ogre, four two for three. That's all you need to see, except for that big old belly. <laughs> Pitchburn Devil is another reprint. 3-3 three, three for 5. When it dies, it deals 3 damage to any target. Not good enough. Nope. Sanctum of Shattered Heights. 3 mana for the Red Shrine. Pay 1 and discard a land or a shrine. It deals X damage to target creature or planeswalker where X is the number of shrines you control. This is a nice way to pitch excess shrines in your hand because they're legendary. Yeah. But again, if you don't have this, then you have no way to do that, right? So, like, you still have a bunch of shrines clogging up your hand until you find this specific shrine. Um, I don't think it's yeah. any good. No, it's... Scorching Dragonfire, one and a red. It deals three damage to a creature or planeswalker. If it if that would die, exile instead. I think this is a solid removal spell. Yep. Uh, it's seeing play now, I believe. Yep. Oh, it definitely sees play now. And uh, it's just going to keep seeing play so the fact that it hits planeswalkers is fantastic correct and also it exiles the card to the creatures exiling creatures is definitely relevant in this format shock one red deals two damage everybody knows what shock does is it going on the list though shock isn't really seeing play right now so no, no i agree i agree soul seer two and a red uh for an instant it deals five damage to target creature or planeswalker that permanent loses indestructible till end of turn too expensive for for five damage though yeah what what are you trying to kill for five damage if it was six then i could say okay uro i mean you get to kill teferi sure like the new one yeah well i'm thinking of planeswalkers that's what i'm thinking of right like it kills questing beast for three like i mean that's decent maybe it just seems like it, it's expensive i don't think it is that expensive it is an instant yeah, I mean, it hits, checks all the blocks. Is they look losing destructible is also relevant? Yeah, I can see it. Put it on the list. I can see it. It kills gods too. That's interesting because yeah, they lose indestructible. Yeah. yeah, I think this card is decent. I think all the gods are six sixes, aren't they? No, 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 definitely not all of them. Oh no, you, no, thinking you're thinking of titans. Yeah, you're critical. thinking of the, the titans. Yeah, spell gorger, weird. Two and a, and a red for a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Spell Gorger Weird. Yeah, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of spell-based decks here. A lot of spell-based cards, I mean. The four mana versions of these never see play in Constructed. Like the, you know, Pyre Hound and stuff like that, which are the exact same cards. Um, yeah. I don't think this is going to either. Mm -mm. It's in standard right now. That's the, there. Yeah, there you go. That's, then we know. We know the answer. Subira... Tulzidi Caravaner. Uh, two, three for three. Two and a red, which has haste. Uh, one mana. Another target creature with power two or less can't be blocked this turn. Uh, one and a red and a tap. Discard your hand until end of turn. Whenever a creature you control with power two or less deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Interesting card. I could go for some baked ZD right now. <laughs> Subira baked ZD Caravaner. That sounds delicious. Um, yeah, discarding your hand is nice because, like, 
Interesting. Like, there's a lot going on here. Like, you can tap three, make three of your guys unblockable, discard your hand, draw three. Um, and like you, like I, the, you could have no cards in hand before this happens. I wish she was vigilant. I mean, she ain't though. What are you gonna do? No, I, I, I honestly don't think this card's that good. I don't think it does it. Okay, that's fair. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue with you because I really have no idea. I just yeah. think there's a lot of things happening. This reminds me of like all the uh, Dominaria um, legends that just were mediocre. I agree with you. That's fair. Uh, she seems like an EDH plant. Uh, that's fair. <laughs> sure strike. One and a red target creature gets plus three plus zero and gains first strike. Not going to see any constructed play. Uh, Terror of the Peaks. Three red red for a five four. So five mana for a five four dragon with flying. Spells your opponents cast that target terror cost an additional three life to cast. So that's basically just Thunderbreak Regent, right? Like you take three if you target it. Whenever another creature enters, except except if you have two life, you just can't target it ever because you can't pay the cost. Which I guess is the basic, basically the same thing because you die. Uh, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Terror of the Peak steals damage equal to that creature's power to any target. So it literally lets your other creatures fight things without them fighting back, right? So it sucker punches things. Well, more than that because it can do it to face. To any target. Oh, wow. This card is bananas. I don't know if it's bananas, but it's it's definitely interesting. No, this card is bananas. You're insane. It doesn't have haste, but like if they if they try to kill us, they're taking three, automatically. Any other creature you play deals damage equal to its power to any target. Yeah, like it's they don't have to. Is, if they don't have a creature, you go face. You kill a planeswalker. Like the problem is, it's it's at it's at the top of your curve generally, right? Well, no, not if you're playing like you. You're not talking about. I'm not talking about mono red though. Like what if you're playing red green or blue red or you know, Jeskai. Like, this is a fine card in any any red deck. I definitely don't see it as in a mono red card. It's definitely a red green card. I agree with you there. Yeah, I agree. This isn't like a Thunderbolt Hellcater or a Stormbreath Dragon or something. This gets wrecked by white enchantments. It gets wrecked by like one white enchantment. Banishing life. If you put face fetters on this, it's still going to trigger. You're no, still they're talking about um, Elspeth. Conqueror's Death. Are they? Um, that would be my guess. ECD, yeah. Eh? What are you going to do? I mean, sure, but like that... I mean, that that goes for most creatures, right? Questing Beast does too, so... What, are you not going to play that? No, um, I don't I don't think that's a good argument for it. I was just... I was elaborating on what they were saying. I, yeah. I, I, I definitely I, think that this card could see play. But I feel like... Um, what's the dragon in standard right now? I think it's... It's a four five for five, and it has uh, riot. Um, I think that's actually a four four that becomes a four a five five. Um, I know what you're talking about though. What's that dude's name? Scargan Hellkite. Yeah, yeah. So that card, like, if we were looking at that card right now, we'd be like, "Wow, this card is like really good." But I just don't know if there's there's place in standard right now for five mana dragons. I think the difference is Skargan Hellcat requires mana to be good, right? Like, you're going to pay four mana to deal two damage, which I think is fine. And the, the flexibility of giving it haste or making it a 5-5 five five is good. But I think this is different because you just sit there, and if they target it, they take three. If you play another creature, which you're going to do, you're going to get to deal damage. Like, I just think this this just sits there and lets you do other, like, gets you gets you value out of either your opponent's spells or your spells. I like the card. I like the card as a five mana, five, four flyer with the first ability the the three damage so i i mean i definitely think it's a good card i just i i would like a standard format where this card is in a deck that is good i i want that as well i think this card is strong yeah cvm would probably want to play in a standard format where this card is pretty dominant thrill of possibility we know this card is great one in a red you discard a card but you draw two cards it is instant speed so definitely yep. uh goes on the list even though it is a reprint And Traitorous Greed, this is going to be, I guarantee you, this is going to be a steel effect. Four mana, gain control of target creature, untap it, it gains haste, add two mana of any one color. That's an interesting clause at the end there. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's good enough, but... No, I don't think it's so. It's a nice little, a nice little, uh, <clears throat> a nice little alteration on a very, very uh, common trope that they use in different, in different, in different sets, so... 
give me two treasure tokens and i think that this has some i like that because i don't want to have to use it right now yeah okay transmogrify four mana three and a red for a sorcery exile a creature that creature's controller reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a creature card that player puts that that card onto the battlefield and shuffles the rest into their library all right love it what are you getting with it well i'm not just talking about standard though like this card is great i think so too i mean this effect is great Yeah, it's just it's literally just polymorph, right? Yeah, it's just a red polymorph. It's it's Luca Luca's minus ability, right? Cool. Yeah. Well, better version, I guess. Why a better version? I guess it wouldn't be better. Technically, it'd be worse because. Well, there's arguments for it could be better or worse, right? It's better because it upgrades your creature, at minimum, if you're looking to upgrade, or technically speaking, this could be considered better because you can get a lower mana creature that you may want to get. So there's arguments on both sides. Well, yeah, so Lucka is always going to hit a higher cost card, right? Right. Because that's just part of the ability. Like, this this is more like Polymorph itself where you actually have to have other creatures. Let in it your, rip. Yeah, you don't want to have other creatures in your deck. You just want to have Emrakul, right? So you want to make tokens, target the token, and then get an Emrakul out. That's what you want to do. So I, yeah. it's still polymorph. I still think polymorph is great. This is exiling the creature. Totally fine. I mean, this to me, you know, in standard, we were, we were using Luca. We were making Jeskai Luca decks in order to abuse this ability. So you're going to tell me I can have six of these in my deck instead of four. I'm not going to tell you that. Okay. Turn to slag five mana deals five damage to target creature. Destroy all equipment attached to that creature. I like the card art. That's the end. Turret yeah. Ogre. Four mana for a 4-3 with reach. When it enters the battlefield, if you control another creature with power 4 or greater, it deals 2 damage to each opponent. That's that's cute. That's sad. <laughs> Unleash Fury. Double the power of target creature until end of turn for 2 mana at instant speed. This is kind of like a poor man's team or battle rage, right? It is, but it doesn't give trample. Um, the one thing I will say, if there's one... If 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 you if you showed me this card, and the first thing you're like, what's the first thing that comes to mind? It's got to be Ali and Trazi, right? No, oh. definitely not. Yeah, and I told him this was Ali's preview card, and I was like, <laughs> why would they give you this? Like, this is there's so many cards in this set that like are perfect for you, and they give you this, and I'm just like, it's just so it's so like out of touch, you know? Yeah. That time stop, that time stop card should have been agreed, card. or like the sublime whatever you know, uh, uh, sublime epiphany. You know, yeah, it doesn't matter. Volcanic geyser, another reprint, X red red edit for an instant. It deals X damage to any target. So you're basically just paying a premium. You're paying a second red to make your fireball an instant, right? So, yeah, I like this card. What? I I actually like this card. Huh. When's the last time we've had a spell like this in standard? Banefire? Yeah. I mean, it's been a while. It's an instant. I'm not saying it's great. I'm, I can't tell you right now where it fits, but I I definitely think this is an effect, uh, a card that we haven't had in standard. I mean, I just feel like for you, a while. If, for a while. Uh, I just <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like if we have access to team reclamation, we're gonna play expansion explosion. And if we don't have access to Team Reclamation, then this is not super exciting. Yeah, that's true too. And and yes, I forgot about Expansion Explosion, but it'll rotate. It'll it'll rotate. All right. Well, I mean, we'll keep our eye on it. We'll keep our eye on a Volcanic Geyser because Rob is a fan. No, people are people are giving me examples, and I don't want to sound like a dummy, so take it off the list. <laughs> it was never on there, buddy. It was never okay, on good, there. Thanks. Uh, thanks, chat. Volcanic Salvo, ten red red, so twelve mana. It costs X less, where X is the total power of creatures you control. So ideally, you want your total power of creatures to be 10. Volcanic Salvo deals 6 damage to each of up to 2 target creatures and or planeswalkers. This just feels like, if you top deck this with nothing on board, you're in, you're you're just dead, right? Like, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> I think this card's terrible. Yeah, it's bad. It's not good. It's bad. Now we're on the green. 
Azusa, Lost But Seeking, a reprint. I wouldn't be surprised if this has nothing to do with standard whatsoever. And it's just a reprint to make either Commander or Modern a little more cost efficient. I've I've been wanting I've been wanting a card like this so bad since the dinosaur rotated out of standard. I cannot wait to play this card. Hmm. In standard, really? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna put it on the list for you. Yeah, absolutely. Done. She's also legendary and she's not a five five, which is definitely worse than than the rap than the than the dinosaur. Which I really but love. She plays two additional lands. But it's coming from your hand too, so like you have to have those lands. Mm, maybe. Maybe? We're okay. There's, there's other cards. There's other cards to let you see more lands. Okay. okay. Uh, Burl Fist Oak. Two, three for four. When you draw a card, it gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. This is actually pretty decent. This is very good and limited, right? Like you're it's always gonna be a four five on on your turn. I like this card. I like this card designed for limited. Yeah, I agree. I think it's good. I'll put it on the limited list that doesn't exist. <laughs> Uh, Canopy Stalker, 4-2 for 4. It must be blocked if able. When it dies, you gain a life for each creature that died this turn. Put on the list for limited. Limited list. Come limit all-star incoming. Apparently, Bird of Paradise was leaked real early. Wizards got salty and threw this in last minute. Which would sound weird, so but this card doesn't have a box topper on like every other rare. What, what does that mean? Source. Colossal Dreadmaw, buddy. Welcome back. Welcome back, Colossal Dreadmaw. You're a 6-6 six, six for 6 with Trample, and that's all you'll ever be. I'll see you later. I'm glad you're mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. Cultivate is nice to see. I like Cultivate a lot. Three I like mana, this card, too. Two and a green. Search your library for up to two basic lands. Reveal them. Put one onto the battlefield. Tapped, and one into your hand. I like it. This card's really good. I'm a fan of it. Dude, turn one Grazer into turn two Cultivate. We're off. I agree. Um, drowsing like, Tyranodon. Oh, what? what were you going to say? I was just going to say, like, we, we've been at times spending three mana just to get a land. And now we're going to put an extra one in our hand as well to make sure we hit our next land drop. Cultivate's like, that, great, that's dude. really good. Drowsing Tyranodon. One and a green for a 3-3 three, three defender. As long as you control a creature power four or greater, it does, it does not have defender. Good limited. It's fine and limited, but like I'm pretty sure I can just play a three three for two mana nowadays without having to <laughs> jump through these hoops, man. It probably taps to deal twenty five damage. Elder Gargaroth going on the list. I don't give a shit what you say, you scumbag. <laughs> I love this card, man. I think it's awesome, dude. It's just because it dies, big deal. Six six for five. Vigilance, reach, trample. Whenever it attacks or blocks, you make a three three. You gain three life, or you draw a card. It's great. I love it. I love it. I'm going to let you have that. Jeeves, this is you. Uh, it still has Defender. It can just attack as though it did not have Defender. Okay. <laughs> you, you got it, buddy. You got it. Um, I, I think this card's great. You don't you don't like it, but that's fine. You don't have okay. to. I don't like you, so I guess we're even. I'm probably wrong, but no. All right, I'm going to click on this link for this uh, for this bird thing later, and I'm going to read it. But for now, we're going to keep going. Feline Sovereign. Two and a green for a 2-3 cat. Other cats you control get plus one and plus one and have protection from dogs. Uh, whenever one or more cats you control deal combat damage to a player, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment that player controls. I mean, it's a lord, and you probably like cats, so you're going to put it on the list, but I don't, I don't know. I don't think it's as good as Pack Leader. I agree. Pack Leader seems better. Yeah. Protection from dogs just doesn't even seem that that relevant. Like, I mean, unless you're playing against the in the dog meta game, like dog meta game. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put it on there. Okay, I'm gonna let you let that. I one think go. it's cute. I like that it exists. I like that it's a cat lord. I think there's tons of cats, uh, in standard, you know, or not in standard, but like in in Magic in general, really. But I just I just noticed that the cat knocked over the goblet on the table because <laughs> of course it did. Fierce Empath, three mana for a one one. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost six or greater. Reveal it, put it in your hand, and shuffle your library. I don't want to do you this. Know, you don't. How, how else are you getting your your Gargaroth? I'm sure there's other ways. Okay. 
Fungal Rebirth. Three mana. Return a permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. If a creature died this turn, create two 1-1 one, one Sapperlings. This card actually seems pretty decent. Like, it's a regrowth at instant speed for one more mana, and you could potentially make two 1-1s. One, yeah, I don't think it's that bad. And in the right deck, I think this is actually pretty good. I mean, it gets a permanent. It doesn't have to... It, like, regrowth can get any card, obviously. So you guys are going to be like, regrowth can get any card. But I still think the point stands that uh, making two 1-1s one, and getting any permanent back for three mana is pretty decent. Yeah, I agree. This card, this card seems pretty good. Like, you can play Euro and let it die, and then play Fungal Rebirth and get your two 1-1s. One, yeah, that's true. You can do that if, if you so choose. Garrick also, unleashed. What? Were you also, say? I was gonna say I was I was wrong. I thought it was search for a with power six or greater, but fierce empath it's, it's is mana cost. cost. Right. So, so I you was can't wrong. get your Gar I can't get Gargroth. Yeah. Garrick unleashed two green green. This reminds me of the original Garrick for four loyalty. Up to one target creature gets plus three plus three and gains trample until end of turn for plus one. Okay. Negative two, create a 3-3 three, three green beast creature token. Then, if an opponent controls more creatures than you, put a loyalty counter on Garrick. Okay, so this is that's interesting. Because if you, if you have fewer creatures, it's only a negative one to create a beast. Which is similar to original Garrick. Okay. Okay. Negative seven, you get an emblem with, at the beginning of your end step, you may search your library for a creature card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. So at the at, for negative seven you get an emblem that just lets you search for any creature, every turn. I don't think this card's any good. I don't think it's good either. No, this card's bad. It's like the negative two kind of depends on you like not being behind, and the plus one's just not that great. Yeah, this is no good. Yeah, I'm out. And for that reason, I am out. Garrick's Gorehorn seven three for five. Not quite Yargle territory. So, I'm going to keep going. Uh, Garrick's Harbinger. One green green for a 4-3. Hexproof from black. Very nice. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker, look at that many cards from the top of your library. So, pretty much four is going to be the standard. You may reveal a creature card or Garrick planeswalker card from among them. Put it in your hand. Put the rest on the bottom in a random order. This is really good. I like this card a lot. Me too. Me too. This card's really good. It's yeah. It's like it's just yeah. It's just really good. If you do um, if you go turn three Harbinger into turn four Garrick, that means you get to look at seven cards. That's not bad. And it, and it gets trampled. But also, I I think Vivian is just better than that Garrick. The four mana Vivian. It's a four mana Vivian. Oh, the the uh, green 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 one. The, the tri yeah, one tri triple green. I also think the five mana Vivian's better than that Garrick. I mean, she gets plus one to make a beast, and Garrick's, yeah. you know, negative two to make a beast, so. Yeah. All right. Garrick's Uprising. Two and a green for an enchantment. Whenever it enters the, whenever Garrick's Uprising enters the battlefield, if you control a creature with power four or greater, draw a card. Creatures you control have trample. Whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. This is an improvement kind of an improvement on the card that's like during your upkeep if you control a creature of power 4 or greater you draw a card like Triumph of Ferocity I believe it was called this is interesting because like if you already control one you draw a card and any future yeah. ones let you draw a card I actually kind of like this a lot like, I if think go... if this go ahead I'm sorry I was just gonna say if you get this on 3 and then go Questing Beast on 4 like you just draw a card are there any um, are there any 2 mana cards that have 4, four power that sounds dumb. But... I can't think of one. No, I can't think of one. It doesn't sound dumb because it's actually very possible, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And standard, at least, I can't think of one. I mean, I know they exist, but I can't think of one. Uh, but the the cool thing is this triggers Uro. Uro uh, you get two draws. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, yeah, he does enter the battlefield. Yeah, I think this card's mm -hmm. decent. I would not, not I would bad. not put it past this card to see some play, especially. It's the nice thing is that if you already have a creature in play, like if you have Euro in play... You can still play this and draw a card. Like you still get a card out of it. Yeah, you you have to have that ability, or this this card's unplayable. I think. Right, exactly. Like Triumph of Ferocity does nothing when it comes into play. You know, so gnarled sage three green green for a four four with reach. 
As long as you've drawn two or more cards, it gets plus O, plus two, and has vigilance. Ugh. Wild. Just wild. Wow. Um, just incredible. Heroic Intervention. This is a reprint. One and a green. Uh, permanence you control gain hexproof and indestructible till end of turn. What do you think about this guy, bro? Uh, I think it was a necessary reprint for an expensive card that shouldn't be very expensive. Um, I don't I don't know if it's good yet, but I mean, it's definitely a great effect. Yeah, I think this card is strong. Um, I don't know if it's strong for limited, but it's definitely a commander staple for sure. Yeah. So. Uh, Hunter's Edge. Hunter's right over here in his dog bed. It's real cute. Uh, mm -hmm. put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control. Then that creature does damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. So again, it's a fight card that doesn't fight. It's a sucker punch card. So I don't know why they haven't templated this as like a keyword. It's, you know, target creature fights target other, other creature. Why don't they just make a keyword for fighting without the other creature dealing damage? Yeah. Is it bite? Is that what it's called? Is that what we, we loosely call it? Anyway, four mana is not where you want to be with that. It's just hunt the week, right? Hunt the hunt the prey prey upon. What hunt the week? What the what the four mana? Uh, no, no, not prey upon. No, it's not prey upon. That's one mana. I was just wrong. I'm gonna look up hunt the week. I think that's what it's called. You guys are probably gonna tell me before I even find it. Hunt the week. Put a one one counter on target creature. Then that creature fights target. It's hunt the week, except they don't fight back. So it's 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 an improvement on hunt the week. It, it's hunt the week, but it's bite instead. It's it's it bite the week. It's bite. The, it's chew, on chew the, the week. week. Yeah, it's take a bite out of crime, the week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Invigorating surge, three mana. Put a one one counter on target creature, then double the number of one one counters, on that creature. Man. No sir, I don't think I will. Joriel Monvoli Monvoli Recluse, one two for two. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a two two green cat token. I like that. Mm -hmm. You're encouraging me to draw cards, and I'm okay with it. And it's each turn. So if you do play this and then you play Frantic Inventory on your opponent's turn, you still draw a card. Or throw the possibility. Yes. For six mana, until the end of the turn, creatures you control have base power and toughness XX, where X is the number of cards in your hand. I don't think that's very relevant. I think that's a little bit slow, right? I think that the making two twos is nice. I don't know if a one two for two is good enough, though. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not put it on the list. No, I don't think so either. Life goes on, though. You know, so this is another reprint from Amon Ket. Uh, one green, you gain four life. A creature died, you gain eight life. This is a lot of life. Eight life for one mana is a lot. Yeah, it's almost your start half your starting life total for yeah. one mana. It's a good amount. Um, I think this card is definitely playable, especially against like red decks. Oh my gosh, if if red decks are real, this card is huge. Yeah, eight life is a lot. That's like, it's like buying yourself a turn at least. Oh, this with Vito is pretty funny. Gain, gain eight, deal eight. No, wait. I thought Vito is whenever. Whenever you gain life, deals that much damage to an opponent, and loses. Oh that yeah, much you're life. right. Yeah. Yeah. What were you gonna say? You were gonna say something. I'll write down. Yeah, the I was, gonna, visionary, I was gonna say, say. Yeah, I was gonna say that uh, the the card art with the hole in the skull. I was just watching Starship Troopers last night, and it reminded me of the brain bug sucking brains. Huh. Sorry. I forgive you. Three <laughs> mana for Land of War Visionary. A 2-2. Two, two. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Tap it to add a green. This card's great. This card is bread and butter, and I love it. Do you love bread and butter? I love Land of War Visionary. Do you love toast and jam? No, not jam. I like uh, Cheese Whiz. That's not... No. I'm going to keep going, because this card's good. This card's Put it good. on the list. Because I'm going to be going Ar Arboreal Grazer and Alanoir Visionary for a while. God. This is a Ornery Dilophosaurus. Four mana <laughs> for a 2-2 two -two with Death Touch. Whenever it attacks, if you control a creature with power four or greater, it gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. There's a lot of ferocious mechanics in this set. They just don't call them ferocious. They're just dependent on having four power or more. But I don't think this is good enough. I'm sorry. No. Portcullis Vine, another reprint. It's an O3 wall with defender, because it's a wall. For one green, sacrifice a creature with defender, draw a card. Sure. I don't like it. I don't either. Oh, a little Pride Malkin. That's a little green 2-1 kitty cat for three, two and a green. 
When it enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control. So it could be a 3-2 three, for 3. Each creature with a 1-1 one, one counter has trample. No. Nah, I don't think cats are good enough, man. <laughs> you know what, man? I don't want to agree with you, but I agree with you. Primal <laughs> Might. X and a green. Target creature you control gets plus X plus X. Then it fights up to one creature you don't control. What do you think about this? Um, Interesting if you have double strike, right? I wish it was a, an instant. Would it be too good as an instant? Maybe. I don't think so. I don't know. Yeah. Because the majority of the time, you're going to want to be using it as a... Con well, maybe if you don't like... If they don't block, it's actually probably pretty bonkers, right? Yeah. And the literal worst case is Prey Upon, right? Because it costs one mana for zero, and then you Prey Upon, which is just fight. Oh, I did not... I, I don't know how I missed that. Yeah, you're right. It, it still fights. That's yeah. interesting. That's That's not bad. I think this card's decent, yeah. It's decent. I like it. I mean, if you go, if you go turn four questing beast, turn five, plus four, plus four, fight a thing, and then attack for four with questing beast. They attack for eight with questing beast. It's not bad. No. I mean, it's funny, Jimmy the Wall, that's exactly what I was thinking. It's like, it's funny because, like, questing beast is like our, our bar. Like, this is what I want to... Whenever I think of something to do to a creature, how does questing beast interact with that thing? Yeah. You know, like Garrick's Uprising, Primal Might. How does how does Questing Beast interact with that? Query and Dryad, Rob. Let me know what you think about Query and Dryad. It's a 1 1 for 2 mana, 1 and a green. Whenever you cast a spell that's white, blue, black, or red, put a 1 1 counter on it. There's a Teamer Prowess deck or something here. I like this card a lot. All right. I mean, historically, Query and Dryad has been uh, the centerpiece of decks in the past in older I think formats. it's good enough. And uh, I think if you have the pieces for it, it could it could be again. Good enough. Ranger's Guile. One green. Target creature you control gets plus one, plus one, and hexproof until end of turn. Whoa, I didn't see this till now. Rain, rain, it's a Ranger's Guile? It's a reprint. I know. Well, I know that, but I'm saying I didn't know it was in the set. Is it like, good that's, enough? That's, well, I, I've just been missing uh, one mana hexproof cards. Like one man, I give a creature hexproof. Well, never again. Yeah. Never again will you have to miss them, Rob, because it's it's illegal now. But is it good enough for standard? Oh, what up, Pride Malkin? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know either. I'm gonna leave it off for now. I think it's actually it could be good. Um, it is very similar to Blossoming Defense, but it's it's worse, right? Because it's plus two, plus plus one, plus one instead of plus two, plus two, right? It's just a yeah. worse Blossoming Defense, right? Yeah, I, well, I'll give you that, yeah. But I, I think Blossoming Defense, I, I I think it's the Hexproof that makes it strong. The the plus two is just a buffer. Agreed. Agreed. But, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to keep it off for now. Well, I'm going to put it on. I think it could be good. It's pretty good, man. It's a counter spell. Like, again, if I want to play my Elder Gargaroth, I'm going to play this because I want to save it. You know, like, it's, it is a counter spell. It's a one green mana counter spell. It's kind of like a Veil of Summer. Like, you don't draw the card, but it's 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 very similar. Yeah, it's pretty good. I like it. Return to Nature. One and a green. A classic. An upgraded Naturalize that will probably never... Which just absolutely invalidates Naturalize as a card. Um, <laughs> choose one. Destroy an artifact. Destroy an enchantment. Or exile a card from a graveyard. Uh, it's going on the list immediately. It's just it's just good. It just does what it wants. It, it does what you want. It's not exciting. But it does what you want it to do. Yep. Run a foul. One green. Target opponent sacrifices a creature with flying. I think this card's real good too. I like this card a lot. Tell me what you like about this card. It's just secretly good, right? I think it's overtly good where you're like, oh, you got we got Dream Trawler? All right, get rid of that dude. Well, it's definitely overtly good. In my opinion, it's overtly good when, when you're casting it, but just like having it sitting in your hand waiting for your opponent to tap that five or six mana, and then you're just like... <laughs> yeah, because the thing the thing about the, the, the cards you want to kill with this, Baneslayer, Dream Trawler, they're not usually accompanied by other flying creatures. Yeah. And this is also an instant, which is nice, because you don't have to wait till your turn. Nope. It's just a, like It just does all the things you want. One mana, instant to deal with a, a flyer that like an, a card you otherwise would have a problem dealing with. Yeah. I like this card a lot. And even like, even if you could board it against golden goose, a gilded, gilded, golden goose, gilded goose. What the hell is that card? 
uh, Gilded Goose, and yes, actually, that seems even great, too. Yeah, they just go turn one Gilded Goose, you're like, turn one, kill it, and you're like, okay, well, I guess I lose my goose. <laughs> yeah, well, like, well, damn, my hand just folded. Right, exactly, like, if they just can't make the mana with that food token, it's just, it could be very good. Oh, yeah, it kills the sharks. That's true. That's true. If they make sharks, it also kills Hydroid Crassus. Yeah. It kills a lot of things that it should not be able to kill for one mana. Yeah. Sabertooth Mauler. Four mana for a 3-3. At the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, put a 1-1 counter on it and untap it. I don't care about mm. any of those things. No. So, for four, for four mana, you get a creature that's worse than Questing Beast, and a creature has to die for it to still be worse than Questing Beast. <laughs> I'm not here for that. I ain't got time for that. All right, Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest, the green shrine. It is two and a green. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, add X mana of any one color where X is the number of shrines you control. No. No. <laughs> no. No. I'm going to keep going. Yeah, do that. Scavenging Ooze, welcome back. 2-2 two, two for 2. Exile a card from a graveyard. If it was a creature card, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it, and you gain a life. Boxer UOP, thank you so much for the resub, buddy. Welcome back, buddy. Really appreciate it. What do you think of scavenging is, Rob? Is this card any good? Oh, man, this card is so good. I can't wait to play it in standard. Rob, tell me tell me what you think scavenging is would be good with in current standard. What what cards could it possibly have an effect on? Uh, you think it's good uh, against Euros? Yeah. What about Croxa? Will Croxa be a yeah. card? Like so? Okay. Cats. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I so like you it. would you would you would argue that like scavenging news is really good against some of the top cards in standard right now. Elspeth conquers death. It dodges Elspeth conquers death. It oh, eats it, the card they try to yeah. reanimate. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Arclight Phoenix. Yeah. You can exile their cycling cards so that their their Zenith Flare doesn't do anything. Yeah. This yeah. Scavenging Goose is freaking standard all star right <laughs> now, dude. So That's good. insane. Yeah, oh my god, dude. It hits it hits every deck, right? But except for Team Rec. Yes. But I mean, that's not that's not that bad. That's a pretty decent bar. Uh, that's fine, right? Like, yeah. Satessin Training, one and a green for an enchant creature. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card, and the enchanted creature gets plus one plus zero oh, and tramples. So if there's a heroic deck, cool, put it in there. If there's not, you're probably not playing this. Yeah, this is already in standard. Skyway Sniper, one green for a one two with reach. Uh, for three mana, it deals one damage to target creature with flying. That's not bad, but I, I think that that ability is a little too expensive. Yeah. I don't want to pay in three mana to deal one damage. Okay, move on. Snare Spinner, one <laughs> three for two. I think this is also a reprint. With reach, whenever it blocks a creature with flying, it gets plus two, plus O oh until end of turn. Okay, well, good for you. Otherwise, you're I a one three that does nothing. Yeah. I mean, this is a limited card, right? Like, Yeah, easily. Spore Web Weaver. Ooh, it's a rare. One four for three, two and a green. It's It has reach and hexproof from blue. Whenever Spore Web Weaver is dealt damage, you gain a life and create a 1-1 one, one green sap rolling token. That's interesting. It's an interesting card, but I, I don't I don't know if it's any good. All these abilities are very, very, very like mismatched and weird. I don't understand how they go together, I guess. Yeah, they definitely don't go together. They, it's like a it's like what what's the first letter of your first name? What, <laughs> what's the Oh, is it Rob? Three? All right, we'll give you reach. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah it's like weird and it's like all right whenever it's self damage you gain a life and make a sap rolling why a sap rolling i don't understand yeah why why not a spider that's what i was thinking too right with reach yeah all right i'm gonna go to the next i'm gonna go to the next one thrashing bronto don i'm gonna put him on the list this guy's just very good his body is he's like a three four for three is great his ability is great versatility all right, Brontodon, welcome back. You're already in... St is he still in standard or was he Ixalan? Yeah. He was Ixalan, right? No, still in standard, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it is in standard. Is it? Yeah, it is. Is it? I'll Titanic you... Growth, one and a green. Target creature gets plus four, plus four. Sometimes giant growth is just too good, so you just want to have that Titanic Growth, and I think that's fine. So I'm not going to put it on the list, but I like that it's here because sometimes you just... You can't have... You can't be dealing with... That one mana cycle of cards from, like, Alpha... Giant Growth, Ancestral Recall, Dark Ritual, etc. They're just too good. So you just want to have Titanic Growth, and I think that's fine. 
I don't think it's his play. Well, that's too bad. Track down one and a green. Scry three. Then reveal the top card of your library if it's a creature or a land. Draw a card. This is like a uh, green cantrip that can set up your draws. This isn't bad. It's not bad. It's a sorcery. I wish it was an instant, but as a green card, I understand. Yeah. Uh, it's. I don't know if if there's room for like adventurous impulse then this is probably better. I know impulse costs one, but like scrying three and, and leaving cards on the top potentially, and it grabs a land or a creature as well. Um, it's pretty good. Yeah, I think it's definitely a, a, a combination between impulse and adventurous impulse. You know what I mean? That's good. Like you're looking at a few cards. Uh, you're putting one of them into your hand for sure. Like almost, almost assuredly, there's going to be a land or a creature on the top three. Yeah. And then if you don't want any of the other cards, you just put them in the on the bottom, you know? The other good part about it too is like you you don't have to you don't have to be digging for a land or a creature, right? You could be digging for a different card and you just set up your draw to where you you get you the draw, land this turn. Yeah, you draw a card, but then next turn you get the card you want. Yeah, it protect protects that card. Yeah. I, I like that. I think it's all right. I think it's all right. Truffle Snout. This is my spirit animal. <sighs> Adorable. Two, two for three. Simple. This is like just a, this is just an upgraded Brindlebore, right? When it enters the battle, Brindlebore was a two, two for three. That sacrifice, you gain four life. This is when it enters the battlefield, you gain four life or put a one, one counter on it. So it's either a three, three for three or a two, two for three that gains four. Who painted the snout? Who painted the truffle snout? Uh, looks like Jason Kang. <laughs> I thought you were saying Jace because he's got blue on him. No, it's not. It's not. I just saying it because that's the artist's name. I was talking about the blue on his on his fur. Well, that's on his eye. Oh, oh, I see. You know, I don't know, Rob. I can't answer these questions because I'm not a part of their tribe. Okay. Uh, what do you think? Is this card playable? No. Oh. Four four life is not nothing. He's a cutie though. All right. I think he's I great. Would, I would ride that gentleman. Okay. Well, that sounds weird. <laughs> Warden of the Woods, 5-7 for 6. Vigilance. Whenever Warden of the Woods becomes a target of spell or ability and opponent controls, you may draw two cards. This is a card I think I said I liked. <laughs> because, like, if they try to kill it, you just draw two. And then it's like a Mole Drifter. I don't think this is any good. If they don't try to kill it, then you get a 5-7 Vigilance. Nah. Someone tell me. Someone back me up here. Someone tell me Rob's a maniac. Yeah, someone, somebody in here. Someone make him feel good because I'm not going to put sucks. on the list. I don't... But it's every time. So like, oh god, I'm just going to go. Wildwood Scourge X and a green for a zero Hydra zero zero. Enters the battlefield with X one one counters as we all knew. Whenever one or more counters are put on another another non-Hydra creature you control, put a 1-1 one, one counter on this. So if this dude gets a counter, Hydra gets a counter. If this dude gets a counter, Hydra gets a counter. Hydra, Hydra's just getting counters. But it's only one counter. So if this guy gets five counters, Hydra gets one counter. I don't think it's good enough. I'll see you later, Hydra. Uh, all right, hold on. Let me. I want to try and understand something. So okay. let's say I, I cast this for two mana. It's a 1-1. One, one. Correct. Then I cast one after this. It enters the battlefield with X. So one or one one counters are not being put on it, correct? No, that's not that's not how it works. Okay. Um, because you same have... thing with doubling season. Like doubling says whenever a, whenever counters are put on a thing, uh double those. So that's why that's why it still works with planeswalkers. When things enter the battlefield, it also says when one more counters are put on another non hydra creature you control. So it doesn't oh, have to okay, feature hydra. I was gonna say, because if you put a counter, they would go infinite, right? But that doesn't work. Oh yeah, because th that's probably why it says that actually, because hydras yeah. would be like, whoop, 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 and then you would, yeah. But then we're still on the no, right? Yeah. You know what though? I was just thinking, um, this is probably pretty good in the white decks that, uh, like, if you if you have this on the battlefield, if you're in a green white aggro deck, if you venerated Loxodon four dudes, like this gets one counter from the Loxodon and then three more counters. I don't. I see what you're saying. It just seems like a lot of work. I mean, is it a lot of work, really? You're just casting it for two. It's a one-one for two, though. You know. 
Yeah, but I mean, I'm, man, I don't know. That seems. I don't hate it. I don't hate. You're you're right. I don't hate it. I'm just not sure that scenario is coming up. I'm gonna make it work. Let's go. Let's move on. Okay, I believe in you. Alpine, Alpine, Al. Oh, look at this! Look at this freaking dog. This dog is on fire. This uh, dog is on fire. Alpine Houndmaster, two two for a red and a white. We are now in the gold cards, ladies and gentlemen. Listening on freshly brewed. When Alpine Houndmaster enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a card named Alpine Watchdog, and or a card named Igneous Curse. You just get one of them red dogs, uh, or or white. Oh, you get with the red or the white dog. You get them both. Oh, you can get them both. Put them yes. in your hand, then shuffle your library. Whenever Alpine Houndmaster attacks, it gets plus X plus O, where X is the number of other attacking creatures. Is this good enough? I don't... It's Squadron Dog. Wow, that's a great... Oh, that's amazing. I don't... I don't know. I mean, it wouldn't be Squadron Dog, right? Because he's a human. It's just... It's because the dog and hawk sound not terribly dissimilar. Okay. Dude, I don't know. This card seems decent, right? Like, is everything just too underpowered? Is the problem right? It's a two-two for two that draws you two two-twos. I don't look. I'm not going to put it on the list. I don't think it's an all-star, but I think it's cool, and I I could see it. Squadron Hawk was also a one-one for two, but flying is real. Whatever. <laughs> I'm moving on. All right. Conclave Mentor, green and a white for a 2-2. If one or more 1-1 one, one counters would be put on a creature you control, put that many plus one on that creature instead. This card is not this card is a is a banger if the tokens deck, the counters deck is real. Yeah. When Conclave Mentor dies, you gain life yield its power. Like, so if you go turn two this, turn three Basri, like that's a real thing, right? Yeah. Green white green white seems like uh seems like something here. It's going on the list. You should going on there don't even try to stop me all right dire fleet warmonger one red black a three three at the beginning of combat on your turn you may sacrifice another creature if you do it gets plus two plus two and trample so if i sack a creature it's a five five trampler for three that's not bad is it a cat is it cat oven uh potential no because again you're not you're not getting a uh, food when you sacrifice it to this no but i mean you're still like you still, it's still a, a really expendable creature. Sure. No, I mean, I don't think so. I think there's better. I think the the two mana two two guy that gets plus two plus zero whenever you sacrifice something is just better. So this guy, you're, we're saying veto. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna veto with a no. Experimental overload two blue red. Create an XX blue and red weird creature token where X is the number of instant sorcery cards in your graveyard. Excuse me. Uh, then you may return an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. I kind of no. like this. Really? If it was an instant, I think it would be sweet. So if I have like five instant or sorcerers in my graveyard, I cast this for four, I make a five, five, and then I get something else back. When you say it like that, actually. I mean, I think in the late game, you're going to have like eight or nine instant or sorceries in this deck, right? Is a regrowth, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's a re it regrows though. I think this card's good. I'm gonna put it on the list. I can. I, it, it's close. I can see. I, I'm okay with it being on the list. I like it. And I don't even like this stupid instant sorcery deck. Being able to use this to make a dude and get back a draw spell, it seems really strong. I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, can you grab this back with itself? No, because it exiles itself. Indulging patrician. This arts. This arts amazing. Uh, one red, one white, black. So three mana for a one four flyer life link. At the beginning of your end step, if you gain three or more life, each opponent loses three. My lord, there's a lot of pieces here to do some serious damage with gaining life. <laughs> Doing damage with gaining life. Well, I mean, like think about it. Like the other, the other card, the veto. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I agree. I think this deck looks sweet. I would. I want to kind of want to play this deck. I'm gonna put this card on here because I think a one four flyer with life link that has the potential to lightning helix your opponent is really strong. Yeah, you play with you play this with Vito and it's just it's 6 points of life. It's it's a it's double lightning helix. Okay, so she deals 1. Uh the life link is going to deal 1 because you're getting a life from the the dealing 3. She deals 3 naturally 
and you're assuming you've gained two other life points for that to trigger. So that's like five damage right there. And then she triggers. That's oh, plus three the, more. Plus eight, yeah. So that's like eight damage right there if you get her to trigger. Yeah. That's a lot. It. I like it. I'm going to play this in Arena and Bronze, and I'm going to wreck faces. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> Leafkin Avenger. Two green, red. Four mana for a 4-3. Elemental Druid. Tap it to add a green for each creature you control with power four or greater. This is what happens when Leafkin, the, the other Leafkin, gets gets buff. He gets, he gets swole. Yeah. Eight mana, seven and a red. Leafkin Avenger deals damage equal to its power to target player or planeswalker. So for eight mana, you can you can deal four to something. This Avenger looks like he's on roids. He's pissed. This dude is buff. I don't think it's constructed, but it's buff. No, it's no, no bueno. No bueno. Lore Scale Codal. Uh, this is another classic. 2-2 two, two with one green and blue. So three made up for a 2-2 two, two snake. Whenever you draw a card, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. I like it. I do too, but I don't know if there's a home for it. I don't think it's good enough, but I like it. I agree with you. I'm sad I want it to be good enough. Same. I want all snakes to be good enough. <laughs> Nyambi, esteemed speaker. 2-1 two, for two, white and a blue. With flash. When Nyambi, esteemed speaker, enters the battlefield, you may return another creature you control to its owner's hand. If you do, you gain life equal to that creature's converted mana cost. So it's basically like the fleece man lion. Is that what it's called? The no. lion that comes into play and you bounce the thing. Uh, three mana, one white, blue, and a tap. Discard a legendary card, draw two cards. That's kind of good. You can discard Planeswalkers. You can discard uh, other copies of Nyambi. Whatever this card you seems good. To your hand. Oh, also with Baron, this is a combo because you get to draw a card. Yeah. You, you return the Baron. Uh, white main lion. What did I say? Fleece main lion? I'm thinking of like... Fleece main is a green, white card. 3-3 three, three for... Anyway, I'm thinking of white main lion. Yeah, this seems yeah. quite good. I, I think this card seems good. I, I like any card that's two mana, two, one flash. I like any card that says draw two cards on it. So I guess we're... <laughs> there you go. Obsessive Stitcher. Look at this art. This art's hilarious. This is like... This art on the left here is so, like, classic and, and, and creepy. And then the, the granny on the right is just like... <laughs> the granny. Very normal. 3 for 3. One blue black. Tap it to loot. Draw a card, then discard a card. Or you can tap two blue black and it. Sacrifice it to return a creature card from your river to the battlefield. No good in standard. It's a little too... It's a, Yeah, I don't want to pay four mana to reanimate something on a creature. I can't do it the turn she comes into play. I can't loot the turn she comes into play. No good. Can we please talk about the next card? I really want to. Rada, Heart of Keld. One red-green for a 3-3. Three, three. So three mana for 3-3. Three, three. As long as it's your turn, she has first strike. You may look at the top card of your library anytime and you may play lands from the top of your library. That's very good so far. Uh, for six mana, she gets plus X, plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of lands you control. I'm so excited to play with this card. This card seems very good. This card is so good. Being able to play card... Yeah, well, you want to play Azusa, so considering this card yeah. lets you play lands off the top of your deck. Yeah, this card is so good. And you don't have to play with the top of your deck revealed, so you don't have yeah, to give exactly. away information. Yeah, this card's so good. Yeah, I, I think this goes without saying this card's very strong. Like, it's just a 3-3. Three, three, it's stronger than Oracle of Moldiah in terms of uh, power in terms of power and toughness. It's probably about on par with uh, Corsair Crucifix. Corsair Crucifix has four say, toughness. I think, I think Corsair might be... I think this is better. Really? Attacking for three is real. I agree with that. Also, getting plus X plus X is not nothing in the late game. Like... Yeah. You can give her like plus eight plus eight. Like, that's a thing. Well, I mean, at minimum, it's plus six, right? Corsair is a two four, Mark. Get it together. At minimum, yeah, at minimum, it's plus six plus six because you're going to have six mans. Six mans? Six lands. I got six mans. It's also not an enchantment, that's true, which is which is not nothing because it definitely doesn't get uh, returned to nature or what have you. Nope. Sanctum of All. White, blue, black, red, green. It is a legendary enchantment shrine. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may search your library and or graveyard for a shrine card and put it onto the battlefield. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. 
If an ability of another shrine you control triggers while you control six or more shrines, that ability triggers twice. Skip. Okay. <laughs> it's like... Cool. Put it in my shrine deck. Twin Blade Assassins. Three black red for a 5-4. At the beginning of your end step, if a creature died, draw a card. I love this ability. I like this card. This card's great and limited. It's a little too slow for constructed, though. Yeah. Watcher of the Spheres. 2-2 two, two for two. Uh, it's probably immediately constructed playable. It's a white-blue flyer for two. For two. two for a uh, two-two. Uh, creature spells of flying cost one less. Okay, it's already bonkers. Whenever another creature with flying enters the battlefield, Watcher of the Spears gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Yeah, this card's great. Does that thing have a neck? Like, look at look at how buff that the chest on it's, that thing is. It's a bird, Rob. They don't have necks, okay? Don't you know how okay. birds work? Also, this this is a great uh, way to turn on Lofty Denial as well. So. Yep. Ugin, the Spirit Dragon. We are on the colorless cards, my dudes. Uh, do we really have to talk about Ugin, the Spirit Dragon? I mean, I feel like ramping into it. I mean, it's it's bonkers. We all know it's bonkers. It's bonkers in modern. It's bonkers in pioneer. It's really good. It's one of the strongest planeswalkers that I think have ever been printed, despite being eight mana, and it's yeah. real strong. All right. Chromatic or orrery. Orrery is a funny word, right? Orrery. Ori, seven mana, a legendary artifact. You may spend mana as though it were mana of any color, which is convenient because this taps for five colorless, which you can use on anything. Or you can pay five mana and tap it to draw a card for each color among permanents you control. I saw this and uh, I immediately thought it was like super awesome. The more I look at it, it doesn't seem that great. Hmm. I think the I think this card is only as good as the deck that's surrounding it. Yeah, of course, of course. And but I mean, just, like, go ahead. I was just gonna say, like, the add five mana is not really very relevant, right? Because if I'm already at seven, do I need twelve? <laughs> no, but I don't think it's like I don't think they're trying to give you twelve mana. I think they're trying to give you any color mana. Yeah, but at the same time, I agree with you. Like, and the thing is, like, draw a card for each color among permanents you control, right? If you have that many different colored permanents. You probably don't need this spend mana as any color ability, right? You're probably able to cast your spells pretty easily. Yeah. It's just, I feel like this is a lot a lot to do with no real payoff, no real affecting the board or anything. So I'm not going to... Yeah, I don't, I don't think right. it's that good. Moving on. Chrome Replicator. While in Chrome Replicator is Battlefield, if you control two or more non-land, non-token permanents with the same name as one another. So if I control, like, two Elder Gargaroths, <laughs> I make a 4-4 four, four Construct Artifact Creature. This isn't that bad. Really? So when it enters the battlefield, so it's a 5-mana 4-4, four, four, with the, basically the potential to be 8 eight power, 8 toughness across two bodies. Right? Am I reading it right? 8 power for 5 for five mana across two bodies. Yes, that's correct. But you have to control two non-land, non-token permanents with the same name. I mean, so, like, let's think here. Prophetic Prism? I Exactly. I was just going to say, like, put this in an artifact deck where you're you're just casting cantrips. Food tokens is interesting. Oh, not, this is non-token. Come on. Come on, buddy. Hmm. I don't know. I, I mean, don't put it on the list, but this, this intrigues me to the... I, I agree. Right? I think if you are guaranteed... If you're consistently getting eight power for five mana over two bodies, I think it's a decent... Like, cards like Golden Egg and... I can't remember. There's, like, two other ones that are, like, Golden Egg. Cards like that, like... Not bad, man. That's... Two 4-4s four is, is big game. <laughs> food is still good, though. That's true. That's true, James. <laughs> food is still good. Epitaph Golem. I believe this is a reprint from Innistrad. Uh, five mana for a 3-5. You can tap two. You can pay two and put target card from the from your graveyard on the bottom of your library. No one cares about that. Yeah, this card sucks. Forgotten Sentinel. Four mana for a 4-3. It enters the battlefield tapped. Why? Okay. <laughs> like, that's such a, like, it's such a good rate that you're like, all right, we need, we need a drawback on this guy. <laughs> all right. Maze Mind Tome. Two mana for an artifact. Put a page counter on Mage Mind Tome and scry one for a tap. Tap it. Do those things. Two and a tap. Put a page counter on Mage Mind Tome and draw a card. When there are four or more page counters on it, exile it and gain four. Eh. I don't. I don't care for this. I don't like the temporary nature of this card. 
Yep, me neither. Could be good, though. Gaining four, though. Nah. It triggers all your gain three life things. Nah. Oh, my God. What a hater. I'm gonna. I don't. I'm not sold on it, but I, I like it. I think it's good. Four activations is fine. You're, you're not gain... putting. You're not putting an artifact in your gain life deck where you're. It's triggered by dudes. What are you bouncing it with, though? What doth life says, and you bounce it. What are you bouncing it with? Anyway, meteorite. Another reprint. Five mana for a mana rock. Uh, add one mana of any color, but when it enters the battlefield, it deals two to any target. So it's basically a three mana mana rock with a two mana shock stapled onto it, and I don't think that's any good at all. No. Core Sky Fishery says, okay. Uh, Palladium Mirror. Add two mana, two colorless mana, and it's a 2 2 for three. Palladium Mirror is always just fine. Whatever. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you could, you could have turn three, six mana. Ugh. Okay, moving on. You Prismite. really don't think that's any good in, in, in a format with Ugin? I think Palladium Mirror is a little fragile. Sure. I think for three man, I'd rather just play like Cultivate. Fair. You know? Because I can't imagine you're playing um, Ugin in a non green deck. I can't imagine. I mean, I guess you're in a control deck, he's probably fine. But, you know. Yeah, skip it. Okay. Um, Prismite two mana for a two one. Add one mana of any color for two mana. It's that's boopy. It's not good. Not great, Bob. It's not great, Bob. Not great, Bob. Equipped creature gets plus one plus one. It's oh short sword. I guess I'll read the name because it's it's so unexciting. I'm like, <sighs> what, what do you say? I thought I thought the uh, I thought audio cut out for a second. I'm like, oh, I missed the name. Short sword, one mana for equip equip make equip creature gets plus one plus one equip it for one. Not bad and limited. That's fine. Silent dart, one mana artifact. Silent dart deals three damage to target creature if you pay four mana and tap it and sacrifice it. So, I've had like, a few silent darts um, while we've been recording. Yikes! Were they uh, were they silent but deadly darts? They were just silent darts, man. I don't I don't judge. Uh, you, you don't even judge your own darts. Nope. Okay. Well, this is five mana for a lightning bolt, and that's just terrible. So, <laughs> Sky Scanner. I love Sky Scanner. Three mana for a one one. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. I love Sky Scanner. You like Sky Scanner? Not in constructed, but in limited. Yeah, this card's. What about? How do you feel about the next card? The next card is Solemn Simulacrum. Wow, I had not seen this art. This art is great, and I friggin' love it, dude. Four mana for a 2-2. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card. Put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. Then when it dies, you may draw a card. I love it. This card's great, man. Putting a Thopter into a non-Thopter set. Jeez. Oh, man. That's a, that's a solid meme. Arctic Avenger, I love that you've been around that long. That you know that that you know that meme, dude. I think this card, Psalm Simulacrum, is going to go on. I'm going to put it on the list. Uh, Yeah. That's like the first card since Ugin that we put on here, so. Spark Hunter Masticore. I think this card's also pretty sweet. Put it three, on the list. Three mana for a 3-4, so good stats. You have to discard a card, but that's just the Masticore cost, right? Might as well be Masticard cost. I, you know what? I got nothing here. That was Protection bad. from Planeswalkers. Can't be bounced with Teferi. Uh... One mana, it deals for to pay one. Spark Hunter Master deals one damage to a Planeswalker, so that's nuts. Three mana, Spark Hunter Master gains indestructible till end of turn. This card's very good. I like this card a lot. I like it. I this like card it is a madness enabler. What format are you playing, Jeeves? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tormod's Crypt, another classic. Zero mana. Tap it, exile all cards from target player's graveyard. I think this card's good. I don't think it's going to see standard play, though. I don't think there's enough. I don't think you want to spend a card to get rid of, like, a Euro without any sort of, like, upside. Yeah. Um, is the Soul Guide Lantern just better? I mean, probably, right? Anything that says draw a card on it is probably better, yeah. Okay, true. I like your logic. That's where my line is drawn, man. Now we're in the lands. We're coming to the home stretch, guys. Are you ready? Y'all. 
Y'all. <laughs> Animal Sanctuary. Tap to add a colorless mana. Two in a tap. Put a 1-1 counter on a, on a on a bird, a cat, a dog, a goat, or a snake. Nah. I like I, I like this card a lot, man. This is a cool card. What? You can put a counter on a dog. On a you're goat. Putting a, you're putting a colorless land in your creature decks? Did I not say ox? Uh, a, a bird, a cat, a dog, a goat, an ox, or a snake. I think you're a hater. I am a hater. This card sucks. Wow. I don't think it sucks. I think this format's gonna this card's gonna be great in older formats like Commander. Um I, I don't know if it's gonna I don't know if we're gonna be putting many counters on. It's it, in the what about the blue white flyers deck? You just like it's just a land. Oh you, you just mean, put one one counters on your birds, man. You mean the blue white flyers deck where the cards cost like one blue and a white to cast? You don't have to play it on turn one or two, Rob. You can play it on turn three. There's yeah. no blue, blue, white card in the deck that you're gonna, yeah. not going to be able to cast. But you open... I mean, those decks are only going to have like 22, 23 lands in them. You open this as one of your two lands, and you have to mulligan. I'm going to put it on the list because I don't like you. I'm going to let that go. I'm going to put Animal Sanctuary. Put it on there twice. You won't, no. you baby. You're right. I won't because I don't, think, I don't believe in it. Bloodfell okay. Caves. This is a part of a cycle that's in this set. Uh, we guys have seen these gain... They're called gain lands. And when they come into play, you gain a life. They come into play tapped. Bloodfell Caves is black-red. Blossoming Sands is green-white. Dismal Backwater, blue-black. Fabled Passage reprinted in this set. That's super interesting, considering it was literally printed two sets ago. <laughs> but, uh... Actually, three sets ago. Ikoria, and then Theros, and then Throne, right? That's... Wow, that feels... Wow, it does not feel like... Throne has been out for that long, but all right. Um, I mean, what are we gonna say? Fable Passage is great. It's a great I mean, improvement over Evolving Wilds, and uh, I don't think it's I don't think it's great, but it's a good card. Like it's it's huh. good in standard. All right, then it's still on the list, and I'm gonna keep going. Mm -hmm. Jungle Hollow is the green black gain land. Radiant Fountain, interesting. Is this just a four of in the life gain deck? Oh, <laughs> yeah, probably. I mean, it's it's half of the cost that you need. Like it's two thirds rather of of your of your goal life gain. I will say this: there were a lot of cards that are one power that have life link, so this triggers your three. Right, exactly. Yeah, there was a couple, quite a few one one life linkers. Yeah, rugged highlands is the red green gain land. Scoured barrens the black white gain land. Swiftwater cliffs the blue red gain land. And then the temples are in here as well, which is interesting. I think all the temples are going on the list. It's we we, like these are literally from like not even two sets ago. So stupid. Temple, 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 and they're the same temples too. They're not the reverse temples, right? Like they're all the the odd color temples. Yeah. And not the allied colored temples. Like we just had the the enemy colored temples in Theros. So you'd think maybe a good addition to to M twenty one would be the allied color temples but it's just a reprint of the enemy color temples again so i can't wait to open these in my booster packs N that's that seems false it is Thornwood false I already falls the last card in m21 is the green and blue game land thank oh tranquil Co. i was i was lied i lied the blue white uh actually if there's two more there's windscarred crag too tranquil cove is the blue white windscarred crag is the red white and that is the last land thank you guys so much for sticking with us through this set review really appreciate you all uh if you're listening on freshly brewed if you're watching on youtube definitely check out coolstuffinc.com every wednesday uh manatraders.com you can use the promo code rat train and the link which is in the description to get 20 percent off your first three months of any subscription they have a great subscription service for magic online and uh, be sure to like subscribe comment follow all the things to show your support and really appreciate it, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let us know what you think of M21. And if we if we got any cards wrong, or if you agree or disagree with anything, let us know for sure. Yep. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. We'll see you next time, guys.